Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, the Ministry of Health Saturday last held the first COVID-19 vaccination drive through at the National Stadium Providence. Minister Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony said the event was a subject of much discussion and aimed to make the vaccination process more convenient. We have been discussing this for a while now because we want to get more people, uh, to make it more convenient for people to get their vaccines. And uh, we thought about this idea where people can just be in the comfort of their vehicle, drive up, um, they would be able to get someone come to the vehicle, uh, take their information, and then you drive to the next station and you get your vaccine. Minister Anthony said he was happy with the steady flow of persons who visited the site to get vaccinated. In total, 1,000 persons were vaccinated at the inaugural drive through Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Honorable Yu Todd says the contributions of the diaspora are manifested in more than just remittances, but through direct investments in a range of sectors. During government's inaugural virtual diaspora conference, Minister Todd noted that the diaspora can also pursue philanthropic activities, mentor Guyanese, transfer critical skills and technologies, and advocate for the interests of Guyanese in their host countries. The diaspora has a key role to play in ensuring that Ghana can take full advantage of the opportunities for transformational change that are now available to us. Our country is on the cusp of an era of unprecedented development in our nation's history, and I have no doubt that the only path towards securing this prosperity is through the dedicated efforts of all Guyanese, those both at home and abroad. Minister Todd told participants that governments around the world are beginning to recognize that the diaspora has a key role to play in the development of their respective home countries. Ghana is no exception with regard to this trend, and we have often sought to gain a deeper understanding of the skills, expertise, knowledge, and resources that are present in the Guyanese diaspora. We are mindful of the lasting impact that the contributions of the diaspora can have on the development of Guyana. Some $75 million has been allocated to construct a heavy-duty bridge, a reinforced concrete culvert with sluice doors, among other developmental works in Leguan Region 3. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Nigel Darmlal, made this disclosure Saturday last following an inspection of the island. This approach, he says, will allow the operations of farmers in the community to move smoothly. Leguan is heavily agriculturally dependent and uh, we have noticed that some bridges have to be repaired in one area at uh, Thirens. Uh, we are going to be doing a heavy duty bridge. Uh, there is evidence of the bridge sinking, there is evidence of erosion, so that is something that we have to do uh, very soon and we have since uh, tendered for it and a contract will be signed shortly to have that done. The NDIA as well, they are doing a bridge further up uh, at the entrance to the cultivation area in an area called Henrietta. Uh, we are also a reinforced uh, concrete culvert uh, with sluice doors uh, on, on the culvert, uh, on the tubes uh, would, would be um, constructed. Uh, that too will, will aid in the proper drainage uh, to a large extent. Uh, there has to be some revetment work that, that would have to be done as well. In addition, $2 million worth of Crusher Run will be provided to both Wakenham and Leguan to aid in the maintenance of their roads. Roads at the Willem, Good Intent, Stroudville, Tushen, Parika, among others, are expected to be constructed and rehabilitated. Minister Darmlal says the island will see a massive transformation following the completion of works. Guyana's delivery of quality education has been boosted with the relaunch of the online QuizMe platform, which caters to the needs of the students at the grade 6 level. Addressing the launch on Tuesday, Minister of Education Honorable Priya Manikchan said this is one way to ensure every student has access to the necessary resources to prepare for the national grade 6 assessment. This year, on the NGSA particularly, is the year students, the year that Guyana has found it hardest, in many respects, and definitely in education, is the year Guyana, with will, political and 
the supporting financial resources, gave to her students the most than any other student have had, has had ever in the history of this country. Minister Manikcha noted that the platform comes at a time when there has been little to no face-to-face -face learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. She added that her ministry has collaborated with the two main internet service providers to ensure students from across Guyana have free access to all educational websites provided by the government. The important thing Phil spoke of uh, is us having collaborated with the two main service providers in the, in the internet industry to bring to you anything on the ministry's platform free. Guyana's COVID-19 vaccination campaign has been boosted with a donation of five ultra-high low-temperature freezers from the United States Embassy. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony during the simple handing over ceremony on Monday at the Ministry's Central Supplies Unit in Kingston, Georgetown, said government is pleased with the donation. He says it serves a critical role in expanding the country's vaccination storage capabilities. We are indeed very happy today because we have received these uh, minus 80 freezers. And as you know, one of the most important components of managing vaccines is that you have to get an adequate cold storage system in place. Minister Anthony says the donation is a result of discussions held between the government and the U.S. Embassy regarding proper storage facilities for the vaccines. A massive seed and seedling distribution exercise was held on Tuesday at the Agriculture Ministry's Regent and Blasingen Road office, where hundreds benefited as part of the country's 55th independence anniversary. Minister Honorable Zulfakar Mustafa said the initiative is in keeping with the government's mandate to promote food security and healthier living countrywide. We want to create jobs, create wealth, but more importantly, create food security. We are a country that a number of countries are looking forward to to lead in the agriculture sector and what we are doing here this morning is not just to distribute some seeds and plants but we are promoting what we intend to do the minister said Guyana has witnessed a revolution in the agriculture sector and the government will continue to design and implement measures which could help citizens achieve a healthier lifestyle Minister of Labour, Honorable Joseph Hamilton, says through interventions by his ministry, more than $19.2 million have been paid to persons who filed claims and complaints against their respective employers for breach of labour laws. Minister Hamilton made this disclosure on Tuesday during a press conference held at the ministry's boardroom. He said the ministry has received about 729 complaints from 2020 to May of this year. These range from leave without pay, overtime, status of employment, deductions from wages, and other infractions. Complaints were investigated with a view of arriving at amicable settlement. And so far, we have closed 640 um, of these uh, matters. Um, and a total of six charges were filed against delinquent employees for breach of the various labor legislation. And a total of six cases closed. We have been able thus far, since we arrived here, to ensure that $19.2 million get into the pockets of workers that were outside of their pockets because of the recalcitrancy for of um, employers. Minister Hamilton sounded a warning to employers, noting that they must abide by the country's Labor Act and its occupational safety and health regulations. Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips has relayed the government's commitment to easing the suffering of farmers in Yakusari, Johanna Mibikuri, and Les Beholden Blackbush Polder, whose daily livelihood has been severely affected by flooding resulting from heavy rainfall. The Prime Minister accompanied the Minister of Agriculture Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa to those communities on Wednesday to speak with residents, rice, cash crop, and livestock farmers. We hear that they're going to take a while for the water to come off the land, and we are so hard that more rain is coming. We have to work together on this matter, on this issue. Okay? This too shall pass. It will take a while. People will suffer, but it will pass. And the government, myself, Minister Mustafa, and all the other ministers, we're committed to working to ease the suffering of the people during this time. This is a difficult time for all of us. So we have to work together. 
The Prime Minister told residents that other parts of the country were also experiencing similar occurrences. Uh, this is an unusual rainy season that all of us are experiencing, not only in this area but throughout Guyana. Region 10, Region 9, I was in Region 9 only um, Saturday. Saturday, and they flood out too, right? My Cody, Region 1, right? Pomeroon. All the areas, Region 2, Pomeroon, all the areas are experiencing um, severe flooding at this time. Minister Mustafa assured farmers steps have already been taken to ensure a runoff as quick as possible. The last time I came, I said that the machine should be here to do all the batteries. So if the batteries were done, I think that that should help a little. We will continue the machine leave here yesterday to take out a pump out on the road. You will be back here today, later on this afternoon. So that machine will remain in the area. We understand also that water coming in from the back. We told them that to close all the intakes, the regulators. I asked the regional chairman, the regional chair to take out the wire rope and the regulators. To close the water would not come in the housing area. Right? We, what we have, we have the pump working. As soon as the sluice closed, the pump is working. Government also provided food and sanitation hampers for those families affected by the flood. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony says the second COVID-19 vaccination drive through hosted at the Guyana National Stadium on Wednesday was a success. Despite the weather, during the course of the day, hundreds of persons turned up to receive their jabs. I think the response was really good because... Um, from the first one, we actually shortened the time. So this one was from 9 to 5. And um, we have seen more than a 1,000 persons um, in that time span. In addition to which, as you rightly pointed out, we had really, really bad weather. Um, at times, the tarmac had, I would say, about two inches of water. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think um, people came out in their numbers. Uh, at no time did we have, um, you know, any space in between, so to speak. Uh, there was always a constant flow of people, and, and I think that's good. Minister Anthony says the public can expect to see similar exercises rolled out as the ministry continues its COVID-19 vaccination campaign. Approximately 79% of the adult population on the island of Saxakali on the Essequibo River Region 3 have been vaccinated against COVID-19. On Thursday, a group of medical specialists led by Director General of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Vishwa Mahadio, visited Saxakali and Karia Karia for a specialist medical outreach and COVID-19 vaccination drive. Community health worker Helen Williams told DPI the vaccination drive was greatly appreciated as the community recently recorded a few cases of the disease. Dr. Mahadio congratulated Ms. Williams for mobilizing members of her community and for sensitizing them about the COVID-19 vaccines. I could say safely at Saskali that we would have done nearly 80% or 79% plus of the eligible population have gotten their first dose vaccine. So congratulations and it's good to know that we have communities that are active. So that's a good example for us to follow coming out of the region one where we had 100%. Um, in addition to that, uh, again, I would say thanks to region three admin for organizing the outreach. So the specialist outreaches of the Ministry of Health that uh, fits into the vision of the president of Guyana continues. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Nigel Darmalan, has encouraged teachers of Martigai Sub-District Region 1 to use alternative methods to educate their students during the pandemic. The minister made this call during a two-day outreach in the region after parents raised concerns about the teachers' non-engagement. Everywhere we go in this country, including in this region, Redo has been with us across Morocco. He's now across Kaitumo, uh, Matarkai with us. And uh, he's already gotten complaints that the teachers are not reaching out to the other students. Then parents themselves are being very reluctant to send their children to a school setting. So we have to find a common ground where our children are the ones who will not be affected. Parents could be affected, teachers could be affected, but not the children. The minister said education has been greatly affected. However, since assuming office, the PBPC government has implemented various initiatives to close the gaps. These initiatives include the expansion of the Guyana Learning Channel, use of Zoom and other virtual platforms for teaching, and the distribution of printed worksheets.
Following an assessment of several flood-affected communities within the Mabaruma Sub-District Region 1, interventions were made by Minister of Housing and Water, Honorable Colin Kroll, to bring relief to hundreds of residents there. Visits were made to Hosororo, Wana, Kumaka, Tobago Hill, and Barabina Village. An immediate intervention was sought, and the RDC provided a boat and engine to assist the residents in Barabina, where the road is completely covered with water, making it difficult for residents to traverse. Community works, uh, workers, enhancement workers, will assist with the, um, that boat for the village. And so because um, the water is pretty high for, from the roadway, it's up, about waist height. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Nigel Darmlal, handed over a $30 million check to the Georgetown Mayor and City Council for the continued construction of City Hall's administrative building. The check was handed over to Chairman of the City Council's Finance Committee, Mr. Oscar Clark, on Thursday in the presence of Minister within the Ministry, Honorable Anand Prasad. Minister Darmlal says the initiative is a fulfillment of a promise made by President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali to support the restoration of the dilapidated City Hall building. The President himself, in a meeting uh, with the Ministers of Local Government and Regional Development, as well as the Mayor and Deputy Mayor and the, Ministry of, the Minister of Finance, agreed that uh, 30 million will go towards the, the government will su support 30 million towards the construction of the admin building. And City Hall has committed to put an additional $50 million during the course of this year. We expect that uh, the resources are going to be used uh, very wisely. Uh, we were hopeful that by now the city would have already publicly tendered for this work. As part of the PPC government support to MNCC, an additional $100 million will be provided for the restoration of the iconic Georgetown City Hall building. Minister Darmla says the restoration project will begin shortly. There are many staff who are currently at the City Hall building, and we, we are hopeful that as soon as the admin building has gotten to a stage where those staff could be accommodated, that the City Hall building, the restoration, will begin. On the issue of the restoration of the capital city, Minister Prasad says the project is still at a discussion stage with the relevant stakeholders. Plans are in train to address parking and drainage in the city. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Honorable Mohabir Anil Nandlal says the Chief Justice's ruling on the releasing of the statement of polls and statements of recount is sound in law. On Thursday, Justice Roxanne George ordered the release of 4,678 SOPs and SORs to the Department of Public Prosecution and the Commissioner of Police. This follows Chief Elections Officer Mr. Keith Lowenfield's refusal to produce the documents in court. The refusal, therefore, by the Elections Commission, and in particular, the Chief Elections Officer, to disclose those documents to the media, to the political parties, to the stakeholders, and to the public, was a decision that was perverted and wrong in principle, from the inception. A.G. Nandlal says while the CEO has a right to keep all election documents for safekeeping as he is the official legal custodian, this does not mean that he is the exclusive keeper of the documents. Evidence that is available, that is relevant, and that is probative is always admissible in a court of law. And a person who is in charge of prosecuting an offense before a court of law is entitled to possession of and use of that evidence wherever it is located in order to establish that offense. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony is urging persons to take the necessary precautions as several areas across the country are flooded. During Thursday's COVID-19 update, the health minister advised persons to ensure the water used for consumption is clean. I would urge that you take those extra precautions uh, to keep your water supply safe. If you do that, then we'll see that we will we'll not see an increase in the diarrheal diseases, especially in children. In addition to these um, like diarrheal diseases that we'll normally see, we're also on the lookout for skin rashes because uh, people would be walking through the water. Um, they can get uh, skin infections. So that's another thing that we're on the lookout for. He noted that while there has been flooding in several parts of regions 8 and 9, this is not a contributing factor to the increased number of COVID-19 cases recorded in the areas. 
Minister Anthony further encouraged individuals to continue to adhere to the COVID preventative measures. The Ministry of Health on Friday held the third COVID-19 vaccination drive through in Bushlot, Essequibo Coast, Region 2. Advisor to the Minister of Health, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, encouraged persons to take full advantage of the opportunities presented to them to get vaccinated. He said it is the only way the country can reach herd immunity. So Region 2 health workers have been able to administer approximately 17,000 doses of vaccines. And that is a good start, but when we realize that vaccine is the only way out of the COVID pandemic, then we have to do better. The advisor used the opportunity to sensitize persons in the region to get vaccinated. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony has expressed his appreciation to Food for the Poor Guyana Incorporated for what he said was a most appropriate and timely donation to the Ministry of Health. The non-governmental organization gifted the ministry with personal protective equipment, face shields, goggles, protective gowns, KN95 masks, and an assortment of other medical supplies to help in government's fight against COVID-19. We are very thankful um, for this donation. It comes at a very opportune time because, as you rightly say, said, um, PPEs are always needed and we need it to protect not just our healthcare workers, but people who come sometimes to the ministry. Minister Anthony said the items received will be distributed across the country for use by frontline healthcare workers to ensure their protection during the pandemic. Since the 11th of March last year, when we had our first case, we have seen cases right across Guyana and our healthcare team has been really working diligently across the country. Uh, we are now better trained, better equipped, and this certainly would add to giving that level of protection to our healthcare workers. So we're very grateful to you. Of course, when we receive it here at the bond, uh, this would be distributed across the, the regions to make sure that they have adequate uh, supplies of PPEs. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Honorable Susan Rodriguez, on Friday identified over 4,800 acres of land in Region 5 to meet the housing needs there. The move is part of efforts to address the over 3,500 applications backlog in the system for that region. If we were to get even half of all of the lands that we've identified here today, we would be able to, to satisfy the housing demand for Region 5. And so I thought this was a timely visit. So in case we need to go back to Parliament for a supplementary, we can do that so we can start to, to do, effect the transfer and to start doing the designs uh, for this area. Lands were identified at Danzig, Fort Wellington, Experiment, Referendum, and Shieldstown. As government continues to make significant efforts to provide support to flood-affected residents at Black Bush Polder, Region 6, Agriculture Minister Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa on Friday said an additional pump will be installed at the number 43 village to enhance the drainage operations in the area. The minister made the announcement during his visit there. He was joined by Minister of Natural Resources Honorable Vikram Bharat. We bought a new pump that we put in at um, Eversham and by tomorrow I will install a new pump by number 43. Today I am a bit pleased that most of the measures that we have initiated last Wednesday are in place. We have the machines in the four polders. We have machines going on the Crown Dam. The ministers also spearheaded a hamper distribution exercise where several households in Yakusari, Johanna, Mibikuri and Lesby Holden benefited. Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Honorable Diodat Indar, revisited Maikoni Branch Road behind the village of Esau and Jacob on Friday to address the flood situation. On the road itself, when they were building the road over the past five years, they put some, uh, we call it some tubings here. And the tubings is causing this conservancy to go into the farmland. While on the ground, Minister Indar contacted engineers from the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority to compact the tubing. So we're going to the other area now where they're going to put the excavators um, to try and build more in polder so that as the water level comes, comes up, it doesn't overtop and go into people and um, property and destroy the, the, the crops more than how it's already been destroyed. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.